again. And I think that, that because Dubai has become popular and the idea of the whole gender debate and women becoming so promiscuous, now people are thinking, I need I need a solution. I need a fix. Well, fuck me. If so you're looking going... for not promiscuous women, Dubai is not necessarily the place to go. And oh, if you're looking God. for a real representation of Islam, Dubai is also not the place to go. The last place to go, I would say. If you're looking for a non-promiscuous woman, there is nowhere um, there's nowhere worse than Dubai because the promiscuity in Dubai amongst men and women, but like I always say, it's the only city in the world where the women are far more promiscuous than the men. Far more. Because what's happened to the women in, I don't want to say too much, but the, what's happened to the women that come to rich cities is they come emotionally detached. They come with the idea that I want to meet a rich man. Now, that woman is completely different to the woman that comes to a city and says I want to fall in love and have kids now that emotionally detached woman who comes I want a good life is never emotionally invested and here's the mistake a lot of rich men make they seem to think that if they can support a girl and give her a good life loyalty is a given but what they're forgetting is a woman that craves a good life doesn't seek emotional intimacy she seeks financial intimacy now any woman who doesn't seek emotional intimacy is far more likely to stray so they're the most likely to be cheated on is these men that spoil their women because yeah. loyal women want to be spoiled by time they don't want to be spoiled by possessions and a lot of these successful men don't have time so they naturally filter out loyal women and get the ones that are okay with a financial investment and another difficult sort of hypocrisy or, or tough circle to square from men's advice around the you know looking for emotional intimacy is simping for women but paying them in gifts and flying them all over the world is somehow being high value the problem yeah. the problem with that is that you are making an incredibly fragile foundation upon which to build that yeah. relationship now the cope from that going one order down is what well, doesn't matter i'm not bothered about building a relationship because use them and uh, like discard them we'll just get on to the next one and you go okay well in that case, we're not really talking about the same thing. One person is having mm. a discussion about how to sleep with lots of women and use their air miles as much as they can. And another person yeah. is looking for a relationship. And I think that one of the concerns is much of the advice that gets put out on the internet is given by men that are optimizing for short-term relationships, but taken by men who actually want to be optimizing for long-term. Yeah. You know, if you're That's super, exactly it. Super high in sex drive, super high in sociosexuality, super low in agreeableness, super low in commitment, very commitment averse, very avoidant attachment. You are going to construct a world in which your philosophy meets those desires. But if that's the most popular creed that's put out on the internet, and all of these guys who don't have that same baseline of personality do begin to think, well, maybe, maybe this is what I should be doing. Maybe this is what should fulfill me. You... Yeah you end up using a philosophy that was designed for a different machine than the one that you are. Exactly that. And here's the thing, they kind of, here's what being a simp is, right? Here's, let me just summarize what it is. It's not about loving and investing in your partner, which is often the case. They're, they seem to think that anybody who loves or invests or wants a long lasting or who is loyal is a simp. Here's what being a simp is. A woman crosses your boundaries and you still accept and not only accept, you try and get her back. That's what simping is. You, Everybody's got different boundaries. But if you've seen a woman cross your boundaries many times, you've seen unacceptable behavior. And instead of them withdrawing your love, you then shower her with more love to get her back. That I can understand is a simp. But somebody who vets a woman correctly and then uh, puts, uh, explains their boundaries. And here's what a boundary is. It's very simple. The moment you feel something is not great, you uh, communicate it. You don't test your partner to see if they break it again. And so on. you just say, look, I don't like it when you don't call me after a night out. I just want to make sure you got home. Okay. It's, uh, or I don't like it. I, I think that outfit's a little bit too revealing on a night out. L can you just be a little bit more mindful? You say your boundaries. Now, if you don't say your boundaries and you allow a woman to completely disrespect them, even though you're feeling it, you know in your soul she's disrespecting your boundaries, but you're still begging her to be with you and she's doing unacceptable behavior and you're still begging her, then you fall into the category of a simp. But that can happen with women, men, anyone can do that. But strong boundaries create good neighbors. The moment we put our boundaries up, people then know how to behave around us and we become simp free. We become immune to being a simp. But if you have no boundaries, but you're learning the tricks of how to get women, oh, I pay for a woman here, that, but you've got no boundaries and she's cheating on you and you're still paying for her, then you, you're not learning what actually is creating the um, circumstances for a healthy connection.
what are you looking forward to working on over the next couple of months? What's the impact that you want to have? Um, I think what I would love to focus a little bit more on is the impact of uh, pornography on men. I think pornography has had a, a huge impact on men and women. And I would love to kind of focus, if I could have one mission in this whole kind of social media space, it would be to draw light to the impact of pornography on men's mental health because what pornography does is it teaches men women are wild and are promiscuous so in the real world they look for wild and promiscuous women without realizing that wild and promiscuous woman then breaks their boundaries and hurts them and they end up in a slow suicide in the form of depression and they don't realize that it's all connected Whereas if they stopped sexualizing women so much through the use of pornography, they would have higher standards of what they accept and want in a woman, and then they could maintain a relationship better. And then that depression would slowly disappear. But I think pornography is kind of where I would love to focus on. Um, and also just kind of undoing some of the damage from the red pill conversation. How do you mean? Is another. I feel like it's done the exact terrible impact that feminism had at women's belief about men. Red Pill kind of did the exact same for men. It gave them a home. Uh, for the men that hate women, it gave them a home, but it's in the wrong hands. It's okay when it's in the hands of psychologists and people who understand human nature, but when it's in the hands of a 27-year-old boy who just wants to make it in a social media or somebody whose life experience is just making TikToks and he's the one teaching men how to um how to view women is dangerous it's super super dangerous so i would love to undo the damage of some of where should people go if they want to check out more of the stuff that they do uh of what they do or what what you do Oh, what have I do? Sorry. I am Sadia Psychology on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Sadia Psychology, I tend to put everything up on using the same handle. So if you do want to find more, and yeah, I also do one-to-ones. If you do want any kind of um, one-to-one coaching, I am available. Sadia, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. What's happening, people? Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that episode, then press here for a selection of the best clips from the podcast over the last few weeks. And don't forget to subscribe.